So hello everybody. Thank you for coming to this conference from Swano Europe. My name is Diana Cordeiro and I'm an environment engineer and a technician at the National Federation of Irrigators of Portugal. This is a public benefit entity that represents the irrigation water sector with the national and international institutions focused on the management of water resources for irrigation. It currently represents 96% of organizations in the irrigation sector. Now I will introduce the Alentejo region, the target region in Portugal. The Alentejo region has, a, has much lower annual rainfall the, than the rest of the country, as well as a higher average temperature. July and August are the month with the highest temperature. The soils in this region are very dry, which means that the long irrigation periods are necessary to satisfy the needs of the crops. This is still a region with a low population density compared to the rest of the country. Here we can see the hydrographic basins to the south of the country. The three largest hydrographic basins in the Alentejo region are the Tejo, Sad and Guadiana. Sometimes the storage of dams in this region reach values below 20%. The dams of the three main basins in this uh, region can store up to 8,250 cubic hectometers. And the surface waters, waters are the main water resource in this region. At the moment, with the regard to the use of water for reuse in agriculture, the legal framework in Portugal is still limited. However, legislation already exists for the production of reused water for non-portable uses and for the respective things, both previous European legislation. Soon, the legal framework the, that attributes the reuse of water as one of the main activities of multi-municipal -multi systems will be published. So we are on the right path, but uh, there is uh, still a lot of work to be done. Here, on the left, we can see the location of the water treatment plants in the Alentejo region, and on the right, the types of reuse. Most of the treated water is reused by the management entities for internal uses, mainly in the irrigation of the green spaces. However, they are also used in the irrigation of golf courses in the south of the country. Here, as we can see on the left, the 50 largest wastewater treatment plants are located on the coast of Portugal, with only one located in the Alentejo region. The objective of the management entity of the largest treatment plants is to achieve 20% reuse of the treated volume in these treatment plants. So, results of the SWOT analysis for Alentejo region in Portugal. In general, the most relevant aspects of the SWOT analysis were guarantee of water supply, reducing pressure on water resource needed for new knowledge, improve public perception, more support from public health authority, and no competitive price compared to current water rates for irrigation. The cost of water treatment for agriculture uh, production and the lack of transport and storage infrastructures. Now, barriers identified during the SWOT analysis, facility of, water, of access of water, as well as quantities of water for reuse versus agriculture needs, the distance between treatment plants and crops, the investment required licensing process, as well as author authorizations from regulatory regulatory authorities and legal framework. The infrastructures and equipment of the irrigation systems and transport and storage of water for reuse and last but not least, the acceptance farmers and consumers. On the other hand, in addition to having great potential for use in agriculture, reused water is also an opportunity for nutrient recovery reduce pressures on water resources, 
to deal with the water scarcity in times of drought and to increase the awareness to, of climate change. It's also an opportunity to expand projects that depend on water availability and to implement new treatment technologies. Now, Regional Action Plan of Portugal. These are the strategic objectives to be achieved and defined in the Regional Action Plan. And as you can see, they are divided into, into areas of activity. With regards to the national and European legal framework, it's necessary to harmonize it and develop regional policies for the sustainability of water infrastructures. As for administrative processors, it's necessary to make them clear, faster and more accessible and harmonize the rules and the requirements. As for the third strategic objectives, incentives are needed through public and private policies measures. And for that, investments are needed to implement the use of reused water, improve the treatment plants and the infrastructures that take water from the treatment to crops. Incentives are also needed for campaigns to promote agriculture products irrigated with this water and for pilot cases for demonstrating and disseminating knowledge. A, a European network for the dissemination and exchange of results and the good practice is needed. But for these European countries and they, their farmers organizations must share their experience with the use of water for reuse in agriculture and promote international exchange to expand its use. To obtain public and private investments for research and technology to improve and expand the use of water for reuse in agriculture, it's necessary to create a specialized commission to promote water reuse, create cooperation networks between the public and private sectors for more investments in research, and create a database with a specific technology and water quality criteria for reuse. It's also necessary to encourage the development of pilot projects and inform and advise farmers about the new water treatment technologies and their application in agriculture, just as they also need to be trained to use the water for reuse in their crops. It's important to invest in communication campaigns that promote the relationship between scarcity and water for reuse, as well as to publicize and present successful projects and treatment process, as well as campaign to promote studies with the, the research institutions to disseminate the results on the quality and safety of reused water and its use in agriculture irrigation. On the other hand, more educational campaigns in schools and universities create circular economy stamps and the participatory committee with the main actors involved in the reuse of water and organize tourist visits for the community to the treatment plants and irrigated crops for reuse. Finally, a summary of the points that we consider important to boost water reuse in Portugal. So irrigation of water for reuse in water management models, uh, existence and disclosure of incentives, implement risk analysis for water treatment plants according uh, to non-portable uses around the treatment plants, accessible information on the safe to use of water for reuse in food production, and more information for better social absence. And that's it. If you have any questions, please contact us using the contacts here. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Diana. Diana, can you just give a brief presentation of FENAREG before we move on to, to Julio in one minute? No more than that. Uh, okay. FENAREG, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Fenareg is 
um, federation, um, the National Federation of Irrigators of Portugal. This is a public benefit entity that represents the irrigation water center with the national and international institutions focused on the management of water resource for irrigation. It currently represents 96% of irrigations in the irrigation sector. Perfect. Thank you so much, Diana. Thank you so much. That's it. So we move on to, to Julio. Julio, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So okay. before you start your presentation, can you give a brief presentation of, of UCO? One minute. Well, uh, just... UCO, yes, one minute. UCO is Universidad de Córdoba. We are we start 50 years ago around around two faculties. In that time it was Faculty of Veterinary and the School of Engineering, Agricultural Engineering. And we are we have a, a strong agro-industry uh, vocation. Uh, we are probably the most uh, the, the number of researches and the quality of the research in Spain position us as the leader agri agricultural science uh, knowledge center because we are quite close to the Consejo Nacional de Investigaciones Científicas, National Research Council, that is also just five kilometers away and to the regional research agency. So we are something like 500 researchers between the university and the other two institutional institutions, the regional and the national. So and what are we working is mainly in Mediterranean crops, uh, Mediterranean crops, water efficiency, etc. No, that's is, is, is our field of research. I personally am the leader of a research group called We Are. Uh, we are is water environment and resource uh, economics um well we, we work mainly in the relation between water and agronomy water and the human people because it's, it's water in general water urban agricultural water etc as you know and i will go now into my presentation yes thank you so much Julio. i uh, agriculture i mean reuse is just the interface between the urban and the agricultural so we are just our project is just working in in the interface just a minute or just a minute sorry sorry okay uh then i do compartir no just compartir and then i share compartir are, are you sharing no you cannot see no you see I can see your full screen. You need to 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 select only the the, the PPT window. Yes. We do it before we did, but now it's not working. We do it before. Yes. Full screen and now you share disk sharing. Can you see? Well, I just put this all in the in the full yes, screen. Yes, I can see your yeah yeah. yeah. That's now, before perfect we now. Did, Okay, sorry, before we did in another way. Well, then <laughs> my, my presentation is, is, is very small because I, I, I was supposed to do a very small presentation. So we talk about Andalusia. Uh, well, and by the way, uh, the, 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 when I saw the Alentejo uh, description, the, the resor water resources are similar to the span to the Andalusian. It's Andalus Andalusia is a little bit bigger it's in, in, in area. And we have something like 10, 10 million cubic meters of reservoirs of resources. And you, we just see that the Alentejo has 8.5 million. We have the main river is Guadalquivir. And then we have some small rivers that go from to the coastal. No? You see, we have many agricultural systems here. Uh, we are 17% of Spain. But the agricultural production is 25% of Spain. So that difference between 17% of the area, 25% of the final agricultural production, gives you an indication of the competitiveness of this of Andalusia. No? Um, we have the very low density, very na very natural French land. Where you have mainly livestock, extensive livestock, starting with the left. No? In, and then we have the rain-fed cereals. The average rain, rainfall is similar to Alentejo, maybe higher, 500 millimeters around on average. It's very difficult to give an average in Spain, because, in Andalusia, because we have mountains, desert, and it's very complex. But this is an average. And then we have rainfed cereals. Then we have these rainfed cereals are transformed to olive, olive cultivation in general. There is some 
transformation from rain-fed cereal to olive, to olive oils because olive oil is more productive. Um, olive, oil, olive oil, 25, 30 percent of the olives are irrigated with very low low quota with 100 millimeters per year of irrigation. That's nothing. Uh, still, 70 percent is rain-fed. We have some mountainous areas like you see there in the Sierra Nevada in the south with, with typical terrace and very low productivity and very high value and very touristic, but the, the production is very low. And then we have the intensive, yes, the intensive greenhouse area, very concentrated. It's not really, uh, it's not really agricultural area now. It's in an industrial, an industrial site, really, because the intensity of cultivation, there is a uh, 20% is hydroponics, so there's no soil at all. Um, some of them use, uh, use fertilized, carbonic fertilizers so to increase the production inside the greenhouse. So more and more it's becoming more industrial and less agricultural. And then we have around 25% of the agricultural crops are irrigated in Andalusia, including the one I mentioned, the olive, olive oil, irrigated olive oil. Well, this is what you see, and the land use is one third is olive, one third is herbaceous, cereals, rain fed, etc. The best pasture is the, the in the range in the rangeland, and we have fruits, citrus, uh, citrus mainly, and some subtropical. Now avocado is also in in, in Portugal and in Spain. Avocado is a hot topic, no? And a small quantity of rangers. What happened in in Andalusia? Uh, in Andalusia, in the last 20 years, uh, drip irrigation becoming more and more important. Um, uh, surface irrigation is becoming less and less important. Right? You see how it's going down. The, the, the gravity is in Spanish. It's, it's still used almost only for the uh, rice that is in the mouth of the Guadalquivir River. No? Uh, uh, and you see where the water comes from. 81% of the water in Andalusia comes from surface, uh, surface uh, water. I mean, they are used, regulated with reservoirs, with dams, and then in the, there is a distribution and location of the water in the reservoir to the irrigated communities, etc. Cetera, et cetera, no? And then groundwater. Groundwater is around 20%. You see the number there is everywhere, mainly in the coastal areas, but it's everywhere, also in the inland Andalusia. Um, officially, the reuse water and desalination water is only 1%, so of the total water. No? Uh, we, we grow high value crops. Before I comment that the, we are 25% of the Spanish agricultural production and only 17% of the area, so something is working here. No? And you see here, more or less, an average, this is quite variable depending on the price of the product. No? A normal price of the product of olive oil is, can be converted in two euros per cubic meter of productivity. So if you want, I can give you the numbers. So it's very easy. One cubic meter of water gives you half kilo half kilo of olive oil. Okay, so if you multiply the half kilo of olive oil by the price, you can get maybe 2.1.5 euros per cubic meter. How much can they pay, the farmer? Well, the farmer cannot pay two euros, obviously, because they have other costs. They have harvesting costs, fertilizer costs, etc., etc. So my estimation is that they can pay up to 60 cents. After 60 cents, they are losing money. Uh, almonds, similar numbers. Almonds are now also a hot topic here, and you can go to this number. Avocado, mango, subtropical, they can pay more because they are very profitable. They can go even to one euro per cubic meter. Berries, berries is also near um, Huelva, near Algarve, near Portugal. Uh, is You can pay more. You can even go to four euros per cubic meter. In, and greenhouse, the, the one I mentioned before, they are so industrial, they can go, the, the water productivity is very high, but they have a lot of cost. Um, the ability to pay maybe is 0 0.6. Or, and what is the alternative? The usually, the important thing here with the water, with the reuse water, because this one project is also, is only about reuse water, is the alternative. If, 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 as, as in Alentejo, if you have very, 
very reasonable price of the water from the Alkeba Basin, uh, and you have 0 0.10 cents, 0 0.5 cents, 10 cents, it's difficult that the farmer is going to use reuse water when they have he has a good alternative, very low, um, lower price. You see here the alternative source cost usually for olive oil is 10 cents, for almond is 10 cents, for avocado is more expensive because they are in the coast and so on. They go to 20, 30 cents. In greenhouse, they are using more and more desalination and it's more expensive and it can go to 60 cents. So, uh, once is the capacity to pay, but even if they can pay, they will they will not pay more than the alternative resource cost. No. So what is the regional plan? Well, we we need to to get our social consensus to, to increase water reuse. We need to get uh, as much as possible of the the the, the European funds. Uh, we need to include the new wastewater treatment plan, the old one they were built in the 90s and in, and so on from the 90s we start building a lot of wastewater plant they never considered the tertiary treatment so they stop with the secondary treatment and some of them are now increasing the wastewater treatment plant with a new tertiary treatment to be able of producing water with the quality that the, the regulation european regulation said no? The water agency, both the Guadalquivir River was and, and the and the Mediterranean, because we have two, is willing to change uh, over extracted aquifer water rights for groundwater. Eh? Okay, because the, the, the idea is you have an, an aquifer that is in the coast and with saline intrusion and with mm, de decreasing level of piezometric. And we want to say to the farmer, look, stop pumping and we give you reused water. What's the problem? The problem is that the farmer, even if they are using uh, groundwater, they have the right to do that. The only problem is mm, the, the water is becoming more and more scarce. And even if they have a legal allocation, uh, we need to do a, a new planification so that everybody get a reduced quota because if everybody, everybody use the quota we, we finish the aquifer in, in the next 10 years so we need to reorganize the quota so what the what the agency one is that people say look, look i give you reuse water and you stop pumping but the farmers say look my water from the pumping is 10 cents and you give me water that cost me 50 cents so who is going to pay the difference and that is what part of the problem we have now so it's governance, it's legal definition, it's allocation. Sometimes also we have we have a very old and very good, I think it's, we had a good legal framework since 1985. Um, it's working quite well in a country as dry as Spain, more or less. We are respecting the environmental flows, uh, more or less. Um, people is more or less getting the water they, they have their, their right, but uh, the the use of mixed sources so that your allocation usually is you, you you are allocated only surface water or you are allocated only groundwater by the way it's forbidden to have both you can have only groundwater or you can only have surface water you can you can have not both as a farmer no? so to increase this to give the farmer the ability to in, to integrate different sources of water mix i call it it's not easy. Uh, they need to, to, to do some legal changes. So uh, what, what I want to just to finish, this thing of reuse is more a practical than a theoretical thing. So, and you need to be very close to the territory. I will explain what I mean. Guadalquivir River Basin is 50% of the Andalusian area. But in all the Guadalquivir Basin, 99% is inside the country. I mean, we have, Guadalquivir has no coast at all. The coast is the Guadalquivir mouth that is already with rice and Doñana Natural Park, and there is no population in the mouth of the river. 99% of the population is behind Sevilla, so, so it's inside the country. What's happened there? When you, are, when you want to reuse water, you need to take into consideration the hydrological cycle. So that you are, if you use this water and evaporate it in a, in a crop, 
uh, maybe this water was recited in the in the river to do the environmental flow. So uh, only one percent, that's the one percent you saw before of the water in the Guadalquivir is reuse. But there is a hydrological, hydrological, no legal, no economical, no technical, it's an hydrological limitation to, in, to increase this, this value. Now there are some provisions to increase this value to a two percent, but no more. Never, be, never will be all above this two percent, because people will, people even is willing to change surface water by reuse water, because as Rafa explained, the re, the, 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 the reuse water is 100 percent guarantee, because the city always has the water. But you know, just an example. This year, this year, the farmer has a reduction in the quota by 50 percent because we are in the middle of a drought. So if you are a normal farmer, you will have 50 percent of your normal quota. What happened with the people who can use the water from the city? Uh, they have no reduction. They have the same water as always. They have 100 percent of the water because the city has no, is not affected by the by the limitation. So if you can select between a uh, non guaranteed that some variable fussy uncertain supply of water and something that is always reliable 99.9 percent .9 reliable and, and guaranteed uh, people will prefer the reused water but we, you cannot do that because in this year that we have a drought we need that the water from the wastewater treatment plant go to the river and they don't go to uh to irrigate a crop because if they irrigate the crop they will evaporate and they will go to the sky and we need that water into the river. So yeah, my message is you must consider always the situation. What, where is the what, what farmer getting the water now? How much cost? Just to see if he will be able of changing the water source. There's one point that I tried to give you. And the other is the point of the wastewater treatment plant is very important. And the location of this facility into the hydrological system of the basin is very important. So good morning again. Maybe we can start with Noemi presenting the region of Antwerp and Limburg of Belgium. Noemi, thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Carolina. I will I will start a regional dynamic session here uh, for the region of Antwerp and Limburg, or more broadly, the region of Flanders. I'm going to share my screen as well as you can see my presentation. So normally uh, you see my presentation if everything is all right. Um, so I'm going to explain you a little bit more about the context of reclaimed water in the region of Flanders, so that's the northern part of Brussels. Um, myself, I'm Noemi Hizet. I'm a researcher uh, water and, and soil at the research station for the vegetable production. And I also prepared uh, one slide with a very brief presentation of uh, our uh, organization as that you have a bit of background from where it comes from. So um, we are the research station for the pr uh, vegetable production, and it's a member organization of growers and farmers in the vegetable production. And we do mainly practical and applied scientific research are in interaction with uh, many actors in the horticultural sector. And so one of our main goals is also to disseminate our results, uh, our research results. Um, on the slides, you see all different types of research, re research topics. Uh, we focus on, and I also elaborated a bit mo more about uh, the work we do within uh, the water topics. Um, but now let's go to the content of this presentation. Um, on this slide, I summarize a bit uh, the context and the state of play of water in the region of Flanders. And the most important figure maybe, or the, the ones who says the most is the first one, which uh, states the water availability per capita per year in the region of Flanders. Um, the index is around 1,000 to 1,700 cube uh, available per capita per year. And it is it indicates uh, uh, actually uh, low water availability in the region. This was also figured on the maps of the previous speakers of this morning. Uh, when you see Flanders, it's also often 
uh, figured uh, in, in one of those red uh, colors, uh, which indicates uh, what is scarcity in a region. And that's maybe something that is not automatically uh, linked with a region, as, it, as it's often like pictured as a region with a lot of rain. Um, but it can be explained by the uh, relatively low availability of fresh water resources. Um, we don't have uh, massive rivers, which um, have yeah, can bring a lot of inflow of water, but this also in combination with very high uh, population density uh, in the area. On the slide, you see other uh, figures uh, regarding the water consumption in the region. And uh, on the right side of the slide, it shows which uh, sector uses uh, most of the water in the region. Um, agriculture is one of the large uh, water consumers. It's around uh, a bit less than 10% of the water consumed in the region, but you cannot, I guess, compare it to uh, regions um, like more Southern European countries where I would expect it would be more uh, towards the 70%. Um, in Flanders, uh, water, uh, the agriculture used to be uh, irrigated, uh, rain-fed irrigation, but uh, with the years, uh, we see that we more and more need to rely on irrigation to meet the crop uh, water requirements. Also here we see the impact of a changing climate. Um, we have less uh, water during the summer periods, and that's also what uh, climate studies uh, predict for the region um, that on the annual basis, the precipitation will be more or less uh, the same, but that in the summer periods, precipitation are expected to decrease. Uh, for the province of Antwerp, um, a study figured that it would be by 2030 in a severe climate scenario, a decrease of 16% of the precipitation in the summer. Um, yeah, on the other side, the precipitation would rise in the winter period, but that's of course less interesting from an agricultural point of view. Then very shortly about then the water sources usually used for agriculture, of course, rainfall, but, but as just stated, and I've seen the last, uh, especially last four years, summers were um, pretty dry. And that's the reason also we need to shift to more uh, irrigation. Um, the other common, uh, water sources used then uh, to irrigate the crops the, the most common water source is groundwater but here in flanders um, groundwater resources are uh, put under pressure it's um, that's also the the, the text i that's the, the text of some uh, journals but it also came a lot in the media as a an important point of attention in the region is that we have uh, limited groundwater resources and uh, that they are not um, filled up again, so that this gap, um, especially we see those the last years, uh, yeah, show that there is a decrease of, of the groundwater uh, resources. Um, and the map you see on the slide shows at the status, it's, it's, um, it's actually the monitor, the, the status of the groundwater that I, that I took from the website from a week ago. And it shows that still groundwater levels are uh, low. So all the, the dark arrows and, and the light uh, brown arrows state that the groundwater on those places is lower than uh, for the lower than normal for the time of the year. So also it is felt uh, from um, yeah, the, the legal permits um, are also put under pressure. Uh, for dry wells for agriculture also to use that water for irrigation. And then another commonly used uh, water source for uh, irrigation uh, is surface water, but also there um, last year there have been um, more uh, prohibitions to use that uh, water source, uh, especially during droughts. Uh, and also they are setting up uh, ecological minimum uh, flows for in certain water courses to to ensure uh, yeah, ecological lives in the rivers. So all this together brings us why uh, reclaimed water also here gains interest to use um, for irrigation uh, in the region of Flanders. What is the status? Um, it is, um, so we treat um, 800 million cube of water per year in Flanders. 
and the treats the wastewater treatment operator in the region is Aquafin, which is the main operator of wastewater treatment plants in Flanders. Um, those figure also, figures also come uh, from them, and they say that less than 0.6% of the waste water is now reused. Uh, in the charts, um, the, the blue um, uh, color uh, states that uh, reuse uh, is for drinking water, in orange is processed water, and then the little uh, piece in gray is, are basically the collection at the wastewater treatment plants. And from those collections, agriculture is the, the main uh, user. 80% of the collections in 2019 and in 2020, it was 60% for agricultural use. But overall, it's a very small amount. With the regional stakeholders, we also set up a SWOT analysis, stating a bit the strengths and the weaknesses of this water source compared to other water sources in the region. Uh, a big strength is, of course, uh, the continuous supply of this water, even during dry periods, and that uh, water treatment technologies are available in the region. On the other side, the weaknesses is um, yeah, the temporal and discontinuous demand of agriculture. For now, in the last years, it was uh, used in a case of emergency and a bit as a last resort of, oh, there is no other alternative. We are going uh, to, to reuse that water. Um, and um, yeah, that is one of the weaknesses currently. Um, another weakness are, is, of course, the costs uh, compared yeah, for an additional treatment, for storage, uh, compared to other water resources and the lack of a distribution network. In Flanders, we do not have the tradition, as I said, of, of, of large-scale irrigated agriculture, so we do not have uh, an extended distribution network as it is uh, traditionally in uh, more southern European countries. Um, and then we also stated some opportunities and threats um, back then, when we made it a SWOT analysis, the political vision and the legislation was still a source of uncertainty, which could be seen as an opportunity or as a threat, which could also block some initiatives, depending on uh, the regulation which will put into place. Um, also interesting is um, that water com committees um, or organization of farmers and, and other stakeholders around water is seen as an opportunity as it barely does not exist in the region, uh, but it could be a form of grouping people together um, in, in, yeah, around the use of water. Um, as we see, it will be more imp important in the future. Um, I'm not going to be more in detail, otherwise the presentation uh, will be too long, but all those reports are also available on the project website. Furthermore, we also developed a regional action plan uh, in the region where uh, we stayed together also with a regional working group, uh, a group of stakeholders um, in, in the region of Flanders. Um, also there, I'm not going into detail because it, there it's, it says yeah, some step we could take as region to achieve some results. Uh, but I highlighted the, the key uh, messages in the document. Uh, which uh, states, based on the discussion, that we should go towards a more structural approach and not an ad hoc uh, use of this water uh, as it was in the past. Also regarding uh, reclamation treatments, which will be necessary. Um, furthermore, we also need to have a better understanding of the long-term effects on, on, uh, of the water. Um, and also defining besides the legal norms, which are now stated by the, the regulations, also um, additional agronomic uh, requirements from an agronomical point of view, I mean. Uh, for instance, here we are considering to reuse this water um, in the farming systems implemented here, which could be uh, in closed greenhouses, uh, where um, the water is recirculated from that point of view, for instance, sodium is an important uh, water parameter, uh, which is relatively high um, in, in the, the reclaimed urban uh, yeah, wastewater, which, which then needs to be reclaimed. So there also we need to see which type of treatments uh, would be uh, feasible uh, and, and in which type of setting um, 
yeah, is, is this uh, feasible? And so it boils down into a case-by-case -case evaluation and also very necessary uh, in the region is a cost-benefit analysis comparing also with uh, the costs of other water resources to make it uh, more feasible on a larger scale to reuse that water for irrigation. Okay, I'm going to not take too long anymore, but I wanted to end with um, highlighting some initiatives um, going up in the region. As I said, we do not have a very uh, yeah, large scale use of, um, of reclaimed water from an urban wastewater point of view, but uh, the last years there was a lot of interest and also different uh, initiatives are, um, are ongoing now in Flanders. Um, as, for instance, um, the, the, the initiative in, in the framework of the operational group AWER, uh, which is located in the, in the province of Antwerp and where uh, we reclaim water for, from a wastewater treatment plants uh, for uh, vegetable production, which is irrigated with drip irrigation. Uh, here we, we actually supplied the reclamation treatment in a form of a, of a container where we could actually test uh, different, um, which makes us able to test different reclamation treatment rates and also to e e evaluate that on the effects of E. coli, which is an important parameter in the European regulation. Uh, another um, research which is going on actually at our uh, research station is to see what is the potential of this water source in a closed hydroponic system. So there is research, there was uh, a research um, going on in the culture of cucumber, which, so as I said, analyzed uh, especially on the sodium aspect, which, which is really important in this recirculation system. Uh, and it used an ultra filtration uh, treatment step. Other initiatives um, located in Limburg. Uh, where they th that research project is going to start and it's an interesting one in the sense that they are going to supply the reclaimed water uh, through sub irrigation so that means that they will supply the water um, by infiltrating the water through the, the existing drainage system and there will be a lot of uh, monitoring of groundwater um, and, and surface water um, and then as a last one uh, there is also an important research project which um, looks at uh, the impact of uh, using um, that, the, that water uh, on, on vegetable um, cultures such as spinach, potato, cauliflower, and seeing what, which impact it has on the growth of the crop, but they also uh, look into the effects of soil salinization. Okay, that was my presentation. I hope Thank I was you. more or less in the time. Um, I don't know if there is much time Thank for you, questions. No, Otherwise, I would. Many time we have to yeah. to continue with Remy. Yeah. From All France. Right. I don't know if, if there are any questions in the chat. You can reply or answer yeah. in the chat too. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Remy, are you there? Can you share your yes. screen? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay, I'll share my screen. Ah, yeah. Let me have to stop sharing I your think, screen. Noemi, yeah, I think you have to stop sharing your screen. Ah, and sorry. Maybe turn off your microphone, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, so you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Maybe you can, is exactly, perfect. Now okay. it's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, uh, Noemi. So we'll go on with um, the presentation of the Occitanie case study. Occitanie, which is a region uh, in France, in south uh, west of France, uh, as you can see on the map here. We only have a border with the Mediterranean coast, not with the Atlantic coast, and we are located in the south of France. Um, as Noa, Noemi did, I will present you a brief overview of the, of the region and then uh, get into uh, the main results of the state of art, um, of the potential and of the SWOT analysis and of the actions that were proposed into the action plan. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, we have to know that uh, Occitanie uh, is one of the biggest region uh, in France and is characterized by a lot of wastewater treatment plants. 
the annual production of treated wastewater is evaluated to 350 million cubic meter. Another characteristic of this region is that we have a lot of wastewater treatment plants with different sizes. The biggest one being from the, for the town of uh, Toulouse and of Montpellier, but also a lot of smaller wastewater treatment plants located in rural areas. This is a very rural area with a lot of uh, agriculture and of uh, not urbanized uh, lands. <clears throat> Another characteristic of the region is that the wastewater treatment plant globally, they work very well. They are very efficient and performant in terms of treatment. Now, if you look at the uses in terms of irrigation, of agricultural irrigation, in green on the map, you can see uh, the land occupy, occupied by agriculture. So on the Mediterranean rim, these are mainly vineyards to, for grapes, for wine, that are most of them not irrigated, but more and more irrigated and with an irrigation challenges uprising every year. And on the other side, in the um, near Toulouse, on the Garonne Basin, you can see that there are a lot of green area there where the main crops are mainly cereals and maize with a lot of irrigation, especially for maize. The Occitanie region has made an assessment uh, that by 2050, there will be an, an additional need for agricultural irrigation of 125 million cubic meter. This rise a challenge is that where to find this additional water when you, we know that considering the climate change and the uh, available water resources, there may not be sufficient water resources, conventional water resources. So the question here is, is water reuse a good level to face uprising water scarcity? If we consider water reuse, we have to consider also the impact of the current water discharge. As you can see on this map, on red, you can see the rivers where there are the discharges of treated wastewater, where the state of quality is not good, and in green, where the state of quality of the rivers is good. As you can see, most of them where they are not good are located where you can find the biggest and where you can find the more of the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Some of the wastewater treatment plants, they do impact in terms of quality, the quality of the river flows on the basin and in the region of Occitanie. But in otherwise, in some other cases, it's also unable to supply flows into the rivers, especially in summer when the river flows are very small. This is very important for continental areas where in some cases, especially in the Mediterranean rim, but not close to the close to the, uh, to the coastal areas, where the water flows discharged by the treated wastewater treatment contribute to supply, to sustain the global flow of the rivers. So this is a balance. In one hand, sometimes you get the, an impact in terms of quality of the discharge of treated wastewater by the wastewater treatment plant. So water reuse could be a solution to solve this environmental issue. And in the other hand, you can have, in some cases, what treated wastewater discharge that contributes highly, sometimes to a percentage among 50%, to the flows in summer in some rivers. So you cannot reuse all of the water. Otherwise, you can impact uh, the, the, the environmental uh, system. Another characteristic of the Occitanie region, as you can see on this map, so in green, you can see the irrigated area, the, the crops areas, sorry. In, in uh, blue, you can see the cycle that are the main wastewater treatment plant. But here, on in orange and here in red, you can see the areas where there is already some uh, anthropic resources. When I say anthropic resources, is that where the um, agriculture has already adapted to the water deficits by 
creating some network, hydraulic network, transferring water from one region to another and to supply water for irrigation where it is needed. So in all those areas, you already have some water resources available, hydraulic resources uh, available for irrigation. And sometimes water use can get into competition or if you can see it, otherwise it can get into um, uh, not into competition, but uh, into um, collaboration to supply a better water use, better water offer for agriculture. But you have to consider that there is already in some regions water transfer and water available from different regions. For example, here near Montpellier in the east of the Occitanie region, the water comes from the Rhone River out of the Occitanie region with the transfer of water. Considering the different projects in, um, of water reuse in, um, in, uh, in Occitanie, we've made this review three, uh, two years ago in the, in the framework of, um, of, uh, of uh, Suwannu Europe. So we only considered irrigation for agriculture. So there is no golf course irrigation because one of the main projects in Occitanie region is irrigation of a golf course in Agde on the Mediterranean coast here. But it is not represented here since we focus only on irrigation of agriculture. As you can see, there are several um, innovation, innovatives, uh, initiatives, sorry. Some of them are operational like the one in Rock for Lecorbia, where you can have, there is some vineyards, 15 hectares of vineyards irrigated with reclaimed water. Also another operational uh, in Negropolis, where there are trees irrigated with uh, reclaimed water, trees for biomass production. But what you can find the most is some studies ongoing to perform water reuse at bigger scale, um, some opportunity or some feasibility studies to develop projects in the upcoming years. What you can also find is that we got a lot of demonstrators of pilots. We can mention smart fertile use for irrigation of mice, maize here in the in the uh, in the west of the region, but also the Rero project that focus on irrigation in small wastewater treatment plants with technology specialized um, with low cost and robust technology dedicated to small wastewater reuse projects. And also a pilot in Montpellier and another one on vineyards, uh, on, uh, vineyards called Irialto. Now, if you focus on the SWOT analysis, I will not get into much details. You can go into the deliverable for that. But if we focus on the main strengths, strengths and opportunities for water reuse, you can see that uh, one major opportunity for water reuse in Occitanie is got compared to other regions, we got efficient, we get numerous, and we got large volumes of wastewater treatment plant. Or wastewater treatment plants are efficient and numerous, and this is something really important. Often we lack some disinfection steps, but at the basis we got some system that works very well. Another good strength of the region and of the French uh, national, French uh, system also is that we got a good mastering of treatment and of monitoring solution implementing to ensure the safety of operators and consumers. So uh, we are, um, let's say, able to implement reclamation system performant and robust. Another opportunity that the demand for water is increasing, as I was mentioning before, with uh, an increasing demand for irrigation of 125 million cubic meters in the upcoming 30 years. But the major weaknesses and threats that have been uh, mentioned are the fact that, of course, the current water discharge of treated wastewater contribute to sustain the flows of the rivers, thus making continental water reuse less interesting in general than coastal water reuse where water is generally discharged directly into the sea and lost. Another main uh, weaknesses is that, um, as you can see, we get sometimes kind of competition with some other water resources, conventional resources, and uh, we got cost of water reuse that 
can difficult with difficulties compete with uh, those conventional water resources, thus making the acceptability by end users by, and by farmers very difficult. And of course, the notion of acceptability and of perception that uh, can sometimes some mismatch some uh, some topics and that can be potentially exacerbated by the COVID situation, as uh, I've personally seen on uh, one project uh, in Occitanie. So, um, on the synthesis, we have to say that so far the development of water reuse in Occitanie is quite low and slow, uh, considering the potential, but it is rising so far. Um, one reason it has already mentioned is that the part of the territory is already adapted to the water deficit with transfer of water and solutions that have already been implemented. But water use could be one lever, but it is not the miraculous solution for, for this water deficit. And of course, there is a highest, higher potential for coastal areas than for continental areas where water discharge into the rivers contributes to, to sustain the flows. Um, I also just put uh, some details of the um, regional action plan that you can see. You can have a look into more details on the on the website of Suwanu. We propose 23 actions with different levels of priority, from priority one to priority three. Uh, and just want to mention one pre one action uh, that has been launched, which is the, um, the fact uh, that uh, the Occitanie region plan to launch a study to assess the opportunities at regional level. And this is an action that has already been carried out by the region Occitanie. Another fact that I wanted to mention is that water we use in Occitanie region will be really uh, dependent of the implication of four main four major actors, which are the Occitanie region, the public entity by itself, the agricultural chambers at regional and department scale, of course, the Farmers Federation and the water agencies that could encourage and subsidize project. So, Kremi, um, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. We have to close this session. I don't okay. know if you want to wrap up. I'm we finished. 30 seconds. Oh, OK. Brilliant. And I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Remy. Thank you, Noemi. Okay, so yeah, hello. <laughs> I'm Janina Heinze, and I uh, recently started working for the Aquasafaban Braunschweig. And here I'm responsible for the coordination and organization of the national and international research projects. And today I'd like to present you um, our water reuse scheme and our regional work, as well as uh, barriers and opportunities which uh, concern the future of the Afrasaf Verband. Um, the Afrasaf Verband Braunschweig is a water and ground association with the right to irrigate reclaimed water on the agricultural fields of the association members. And the members of our association consists mainly of two groups. First, there are the more than 400 landowners whose fields are irrigated. And second, the municipalities from which the wastewater come and whose citizens finance our reuse scheme via wastewater fees. And um, the irrigation, which is our main activity, is indispensable because uh, the soil around Braunschweig is very sandy with a low water holding capacity. And so only 30% of the fields of our farmers would be profitable. And furthermore, the last summers here were very dry and the evaporation in our region was far higher compared to the precipitation. And so um, the Aquasafaband Braunschweig developed a water reuse scheme as a circular economy approach with a closed water and energy cycle. 55,000 cubic meters wastewater from the households and industries uh, reaches our wastewater treatment plant every day. And our plant consists of a conventional primary and secondary stage with an activated sludge process and anaerobic sludge uh, treatment. Um, 
Besides the water treatment, we started in October 2019 with commission commissioning of a new full-scale sludge treatment system, which recovers nitrogen and phosphorus and produces fertilizers, uh, which can be used by our local farmers. Regarding the uh, microbiological water quality, we have to state that um, the reclamation facility does not have a disinfection unit till now. So after the treatment of the reclaimed water, uh, after the treatment, our reclaimed water can take two different paths. And the option A is the drainage area, especially during the winter time when no irrigation is needed. The water is given to the drainage area of 275 hectares. The other option for our reclaimed water um, is the already mentioned agricultural irrigation. So during the vegetation period, reclaimed water flows via gravity flow pipes through the irrigation area, uh, where it is distributed via pressure pipes over an area of 3,000 hectares. So every year we supply more than 100 farmers with reclaimed water of an amount of 10 million uh, cubic meters. And the farmers, cultivate, among others, um, grain and maize, which are harvested for our biogas plant. And with the production of the biogas the, um, and the delivery of energy and heat for the households, our water energy cycle is uh, closed. And in summary, one can say that by using the reclaimed water, we can produce electricity for 6,000 to 7,000 households and heat for us heat for 1,000 to 1,500 households. So within the Suvano uh, Europe project, our reuse scheme was analyzed under different SWOT aspects by a group of experts and stakeholders while a round table discussion, discussion. And on this slide, you can see an overview of um, the internal aspects, the strengths and weaknesses, and the external aspects, opportunities, and threats. Um, so I will go into a few points in more detail to illustrate our work at the regional level. So besides other strengths, we have a strong collaboration with our local farmers due to successful long experience. And this includes frequent meetings about news and trends. And furthermore, there are meetings with the municipality representatives representatives uh, based on the uh, public control system. And this existing close network simplifies the forming of regional working groups and the meetings between all the relevant actors, as well as the meetings with governing and opposition parties resulted in um, the conclusion that the analysis of multi-resistance bacteria and also the reduction of bacteria along the uh, reuse process is uh, very important. And these perceptions of the regional working groups are also reflected in our um, weaknesses at the SWOT analysis. Um, the potential health risk uh, due to non disinfection of our reclaimed water was identified, and additionally, the detection of micropollutants. Uh, like pharmaceutical residues in the uh, groundwater under the irrigated field is another major topic, which was also discussed in our workshop here in Braunschweig. At the workshop, we could present our reuse scheme to 55 relevant stakeholders. And furthermore, um, there were experts from different sectors who presented their knowledge regarding water reuse, nutrient recovery, and policy. And the main conclusions of the open discussion part is the already mentioned elimination of micropollutants. And to achieve, achieve this, um, further meetings and especially further research projects are important. And uh, currently, we are part of a new national research project named FlexStreet, 
where we investigate a further cleaning step for our use scheme. And beneath the possibilities given by our reuse scheme, like saving groundwater while handle the climate change trust and the promotion of renewable energies like biogas, um, this, this further cleaning step uh, will give us some opportunities. The pathogen and micropollutant reduced water leads to a decreasing health risk and increasing public acceptance of water reuse in the agricultural sector. Um, but there are also some barriers like the um, heterogeneous uh, reclaimed water access from municip municipality to municipality, which makes a one-to-one -one, uh, transfer of the pound five model tough. So, and a complex regional and national management management is necessary to close the nutrient and water cycle and this could cause further difficulties and like the use uh, like the difficulty uh, like the use of the the secondary fertilizers um, because of minor quality compared to mineral fertilizers and holding on to old habits yet the implementation of new technologies is, is always a challenge. And in addition, the new European law is a barrier for us. The shown tables are from the regulations of the European Parliament and of the Council of 25th May 2020 on minimum requirements for water reuse. And yeah, we've seen these tables also this morning. Um, in, in another presentation. And our irrigation scheme has to fulfill the requirements for the quality class B because we use a sprinkler to irrigate the water and no trip irrigation. So um, our reclaimed water has to contain less than 100 E. coli per 100 milliliters. And that means for us that the additional disinfection is required from 2023. So, but the already mentioned Flex Street projects support us to elaborate risk management according to the requirements of the new regulation. So all in all, there are challenges and opportunities ahead of us. So first, as mentioned, we need to install the new full, a new full-scale disinfection stage until 2023 um, to fulfill the microbiology uh, parameters for the uh, new regulation. And this will be a very tough because the, the planning and construction of the stage for this dimension needs a lot of time. And moreover, we need to elaborate a risk management plan according to the regulations requirements. And besides the minimum requirements of the European regulation, every member state is allowed to further tighten the requirements. So as in, in Germany, the focus is more on micropollutants within the water sector. We expect that the German authorities will ask for an additional treatment uh, regarding um, the micropollutants. Um, but we have also some advantages because with the implementation of the new regulation, we have a continuous legal basis for the water reuse. And furthermore, we are very interested in minimizing the health risk and elaborating a risk management including a multi-barrier system regarding um, the potential risk. And we expect that the risk management will further increase the support of the local community for water reuse. And another important issue is that we can extend the cultivation range of feed crops by implementing the new regulation and uh, a disinfection stage. So now I think you have an impression of the Paunschweig water reuse scheme and also how the participation of 
uh, on projects like Suvano uh, supports us to master the future challenges and yeah, many thanks for your attention, many thanks for the organization. And if you have questions, please ask. So, yeah, other questions? So I um, think I stop sharing my screen now. Okay. Okay, I think I will start uh, with my presentation. There is uh, no one else. So let me share the screen. You can see. No. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Adriano Battilani. I'm working for uh, a water and uh, soil reclamation uh, board in Italy is a consortium di bonifica in Italian that are agricultural water boards that are managing water for uh, agriculture and infrastructure for water management uh, for agriculture. Uh, our uh, um, case study is uh, located uh, in uh, Emilia Romagna in northern Italy. Emilia Romagna is uh, in the in Emilia Romagna in the Po Valley in northern Italy. Uh, the Po Valley is uh, a very large river basin and is also one of the most complex river basin uh, all over Europe because uh, has uh, different kind of mountainous area, hills, uh, valley, uh, many, many uh, river basin because the Po has many affluent from the Apennines and from the Alps. And on top of this uh, is one of the largest and most important economic region in Italy and uh, also in uh, Europe. In the area are living about 23 million uh, people, a third of all the Italian citizen. And the population density is uh, quite high, almost double compared to the national average. In only in this area, we have 710 wastewater treatment plants equipped with tertiary treatment technologies. So that are potentially useful or for use to uh, feed our canals and our agriculture with the reused or regenerated water. Uh, is quite important because the economic and dimension of uh, the Po Valley is uh, of about uh, 738 billion of euro, which means 40% uh, of the entire Italian gross uh, products, exceeding in the, in the dimension, the economic dimension, nations such as Netherlands, Sweden, or Poland. So in this area that was originally devoted 
to intensive agriculture and industry. Now we have still intense farming, cattle and pig breeding uh, that are quite uh, the characteristic of the made in Italy food uh, and uh, agri food industry that are characterizing this uh, large area. Unfortunately, the poor river suffered serious environmental consequences through the poor water management because of industrial sewage and pollution and also agricultural runoff. In this region, we were following uh, a SWOT analysis, we were making a SWOT analysis following an LFA uh, approach, so logic framework analysis approach. So we were using all the data collected by the different institutions and by our uh, organization of uh, agricultural water boards in order to combine a SWOT, combine a questionnaire that was well calibrated for the stakeholders in our region. Uh, in this um, graph, you can see that we have divided the answer for, uh, let's say, stakeholders groups that are farmers, the social one, those that are close to the citizen or organization or NG organization and so on, utilities and consultants and knowledge provider, researcher, uh, university and so on. We considered uh, as interesting or impacting in negative or positive sense, those that in positive were reaching at least a score of 4,5 for all the categories or vice versa, those that were close to two for, war, for all the categories or at least less than three for all the categories. What happens when we are talking about the positive impact of the water use, the strength, the stakeholder involved in the expert panel were indicated that training promote environmental positive technologies. A quite active and proactive stakeholders dialogue at the EU level, managing consumer perception, national and European standards, and that the water must be environmental safe are the main topics that all the categories were indicated. On the contrary, there is a gap on the trust in innovation on the restore riverine ecosystem and support local agriculture, that the latter, in particular, supporting the local agriculture with the opposite magnitude for social stakeholder or for farmers. It seems that the there is a polarity in which those that are more devoted to environmental protection don't care to let uh, such water resources, uh, don't want to let such water resources go mainly towards agriculture or are not caring too much about the <clears throat> uh, rural, rural society incomes. Going uh, to the weaknesses, the weaknesses uh, are a bit more complex to, uh, to, to draw, and I would say the agreement is found on water pricing, need to pump and store, so we need to have uh, infrastructure and storage infrastructure, mainly the latter are lake, uh, lacking in, uh, in, all the, in all the area, and on promotion of water use, but all of these with the lower score. This agreement were mainly about limited availability, farm size and consumer protection. Limited availability means that the capability of production could be not sufficient to solve the drought problem that we have in the area or to compensate the lack of available water during drought spell. On many other uh, crucial aspects, there is uh, a sufficiently common understanding about the potential negative impact. It's something that is part of the 
narrative that is, uh, is around the world of news all over Europe, and I would say in many areas of the world, of relevance, the use of energy and the need of infrastructures, besides the bad reputation of world of news. So uh, the, it seems that the main witnesses is that to reuse water and to make these resources suitable for food production, we have to increase the carbon footprint because we will have to use far more energy and the need of infrastructure because the, the infrastructure that we are already having and managing need to be refurbished or adapted or modernized in, or, in order to be able to match with the water use needs and the bad reputation of water use co could be a trade barrier for our production. If we look about the opportunity, the, there is a big contrast. Uh, not uh, all the stakeholders group are uh, seeing the same opportunity. And uh, one of the most uh, recognized opportunity, what is an opportunity that can uh, let them feel more safe uh, is to have an international management uh, and EU regulation and also infrastructure and water scarcity. So the opportunity to have new infrastructure to be protected against uh, trade barrier and uh, to have an homogeneous so as far as possible uh, criteria in water use that it's not creating a gap in competitiveness uh, are points that are considered a good opportunity beside uh, a higher amount of resources available for our agricultural production. There is a clear disagreement about cost sharing limitation to industrial or not food crops, to new irrigated area, alternative water sources, previous experience and the impact of the organic food market. Uh, I think that the most important one is how the cost of water use will uh, become a burden or a further burden for agriculture and for the agricultural organization. And uh, if this will uh, change or reduce the flexibility of the farmers when they have to choose uh, the kind of crop they will put in their rotation. So if they have to limit themselves to some kind of crop that in many cases are not considered between the so-called cash crop, those that are providing the higher income. Overall, opportunities are really perceived in a very different way, starting from quite far standpoints. So uh, this is uh, the very basis of motivation and willingness to undertake the necessary efforts and to cope with the, with the reforms that are ongoing. But it seems that still stakeholders need to find good motivation to engage. The threat, the threat, there is a strong agreement about the lack of social acceptance and the rejection of products risk. These two points are at the end uh, uh, converging in the same issue. If uh, there is a bad reputation, if still the most recent survey on the social uh, awareness or the advantages of water use uh, say that uh, in general people is agreeing but when it's go for uh, have uh, reuse uh, close to them in their backyard to use this water for something that they feel close to them or even worse to use this water for the food that they are giving to children, there is a strong rejection. So people is not willing, in reality, is not willing to use the, to, to buy food if it's declared that it is 
produced with uh, reclaimed wastewater, and the so-called yuk factor, but many other the risk perception must be managed. There is uh, a general disagreement on rigid regulation, and uh, there is a concern about uh, low water production and excessive cost. We were managing these, uh, the result of this uh, SWOT analysis in different meetings we got in Bologna, Rimini, in Rome, in Italy, with the regional working groups that made by 30 different members from different uh, groups, uh, research, innovation, agri-food cluster, uh, food industries, uh, farmers, uh, and so on. In this uh, uh, meeting, we were discussing how to cope with the threat, with the lack of engagement uh, due to the uh, lack of uh, perception of the so, and uh, we ended in a rational, to produce a regional, a regional action plan that is a kind of joint and coordinated action. And in this, uh, in this uh, quest of an equilibrium, uh, the way to find an agreement around some positive point to let start the process to the acceptance and to the implementing, uh, implementing uptaking of the views. So, okay, what it was important for them was to have a network. I'm, I'm sorry, Adriana? Yeah? I'm Carolina. <laughs> thank you very much. We have to close this session. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I will ask the participants to come back to the main stage. We're uh, doing the same thing, go to the program and select main stage, where it will be Rui, Angela and Rafael waiting for you. Thank you very okay, much. Thank, thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you in the main stage. So, um, my name is uh, Stefan Shilev. Uh, I'm uh, part of the Bulgarian team in the Suvanu, and I will uh, make a short presentation of um, our work done uh, in Plovdiv region and Bulgaria as a whole of uh, Suvanu uh, SWOT analysis and region action plan for Plovdiv region. So, uh, is located in 
in the central part of South Bulgaria, in the East Asian Basin, and possesses more than 600,000 inhabitants. Um, the land is almost 58% agricultural, 31% forest, and the climate is transitionally continental. Because of the fertile soils, more than 100 kinds of crops are grown. In the region, there is 550 to 70 millimeters of precipitation annually, with 400 millimeters water deficit for the uh, vegetation period. Yet, uh, compared to uh, other European countries, Bulgaria has relatively uh, significant water resources and is not uh, really water stress, is not a really water stress um, country. Yet, uh, there are areas uh, that uh, experience uh, scarcity during uh, dry summers. Average of renewable freshwater resources in East Asian Basin District, uh, where productive region is situated, is about uh, it's about 5,942 uh, 5, 5, hectocubic meters renewable freshwater resources, but 100% of them are due to internal runoff. The main drainage artery is uh, the Maritz River and its tributaries. That is the largest river on the Balkan Peninsula. In the East Asian region uh, exist 23 large dams that represent a total storage volume of 3,105 hectocubic meters. But there are also many smaller dams, uh, state or municipal property with additional storage volume of 523 hectocubic meters. Uh, they are uh, an important function uh, in the river flow regulation. The water reuse in Bulgaria is not regulated. The main legislative uh, ordinance that uh, regulates the irrigation sector is ordinance number uh, 18 for the quality of water used for irrigation. At present, 13 urban wastewater treatment plants uh, exist uh, operating uh, in the territory of Plovdiv district. And we're expecting that the number will increase to 16 in next years. Total uh, treated uh, wastewater uh, produced uh, in the territory uh, is uh, 49 cubic meters, of which 2.5 hectocubic meters is the recorded use of reclaimed water for irrigation in agriculture. In addition, Private initiatives uh, for use of reclaimed water for irrigation do, in fact, exist and are applied to their own lands in, uh, in plants uh, concerning uh, poplars, roses, uh, lavender, etc. Here uh, are graphically presented the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the Plovdiv region. I will uh, point out the main barriers to the use of reclaimed water in Bulgaria, which were uh, identified during the SWOT analysis. First of all, is uh, that the average rate of water loss is uh, more than 57%, uh, but in some areas it reaches almost 70% due to the uh, the one infrastructure. The strong fragmentation of agricultural land is a major barrier to agricultural development in many areas and leads to poor access to the irrigation infrastructure. Low and seasonal availability of the treated effluent in some area, uh, areas is also uh, a barrier. Insufficient information in the society about the irrigation water, its quality and uh, effects on agricultural products also is uh, a barrier. In uh, fifth place, the widespread and in some cases illegal use of groundwater resources has, uh, has led to little interest from farmers 
uh, about the water use. Low efficiency of science business access is another barrier. In seven, in seven place is uh, uh, the small number of practical cases of reclaimed water use in Bulgaria is a successful example. Continuing uh, uncertainty in public opinion provision regarding the reclaimed water use in agriculture is uh, also a barrier. Uh, higher costs for production, distribution and application uh, may be a significant barrier uh, for the water use in agriculture. And, uh, and is the fragmented legislation uh, concerning the water uh water management and responsibilities regarding this water management uh yet uh yet here uh, are the main opportunities that could conduct to uh, the expand the expanding of water use in bulgaria uh, in first place uh the governmental uh, support do in fact exist in the area of reconstruction and water distribution in, uh, of uh, uh, infrastructure. In second place, uh, existing uh, market demand for alternative water sources is uh, also an opportunity. Operating irrigation association in some area. Consultation on irrigation possibilities and preparation of project applications from the National Agricultural Advisory Services that is, uh, is, a val is a valuable opportunity uh, for the farmers and support the um, possible implementation of water use in agriculture. Existed water demand in agriculture is important opportunity uh, that could uh, stimulate the reuse. In sixth place is the reconstruction of irrigation canals can lead to an overall reduction in operating and maintenance costs. Most of the, worst, uh, uh, the wastewater treatment plants are in close proximity to agricultural lands. The irrigation uh, system uh, cannot meet the demand of water for all farmers. This is the state uh, distribution, water distribution company. The society and farmers are aware of the problem of water scarcity. So, um, after the preparation of uh, the SWOT analysis, the Region Action Plan of Plodif Region uh, was uh, developed and uh, can be successfully implemented also for the whole Bulgarian territory. Here I will present the main pillars of this action plan. Uh, it was prepared with the support of the Regional Working Group of Plodif uh, to overcome the most uh, important barriers and to reinforce the opportunity, uh, the opportunities and strengths. It is uh, divided to uh, several areas. Uh, in first place is legal measures. Uh, the actions that, we, uh, that have to be uh, implemented uh, to reinforce the uh, implementation of water use in the region and in whole territory are as follows. Uh, consultations of state bodies with uh, local stakeholders of the implementation in, Bul uh, in Bulgaria legislation of regulation 741 uh, on minimum requirements for water use, transposition of mandatory requirements for risk planning, emission limits, frequency of monitoring in order to protect the components of the uh, in, uh, environment for, uh, from pollution. Dissemination of management practices in the European Union Europe to ensure efficient, efficient water use, including reduced water losses, improved irrigation practices, and efficiency, water reclamation, and storage. Concerning the administrative procedures that are very important, in first place, uh, the action is uh, active participation of stakeholders in the development, discussion and adoption of the procedure by the competent authority for water use for irrigation, providing technical assistance to facilitate the documentary work of farmers who implement a project for irrigation with reclaimed water. 
training of administration for acquaintance with the problems and with the late scientific achievements in the irrigation with reclaimed waters. The area Stefan, Stefan, sorry to interrupt your brilliant presentation, uh, be, but we are running out of time. So maybe you can give us your final thoughts. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the conclusions, uh, I, I may conclude with uh, uh, some sentences. Uh, that in Plovdiv region, many uh, positive aspects uh, support the future implementation of water use in agriculture. But the shortage of water experienced by the crops in the region is estimated to uh, about 10 hectocubic meters. Uh, region of most urban and uh, food industry uh, water treatment facilities to farmlands might convince the farmers to use the clean water as an alternative source. And finally, there is a need to subsidize the construction of reclaimed water facilities by the irrigation communities through state or European funds, especially since in some areas the distribution systems have been, uh, have been built. Thank you for uh, your attention. If you have some questions, uh, I hope I will uh, I can uh, answer them. Thank you. So. I don't know if someone has uh, a few questions for Stefan. No? Okay, Stefan, okay. thank you. Thank you oh, for your presentation. Thank you, thank you also. <laughs> thanks. Uh, maybe we can start the next one with Elena and George. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to you too. Thank you yours. for... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen. George, could you please turn off the microphone for a minute? Thank you. And I'm going to share my screen. Share and... Do you see my presentation? Yes, we are seeing it. Okay, okay. So, uh, thank you all for being here today at the Suwana Europe Conference, and uh, thank you for having us uh, as uh, you know presenters of our uh, regional action plan and our uh, work uh, until the formation of our regional action plan. Uh, the previous uh, presenter, uh, Stefan, also talked about uh, the SWOT analysis that we were supposed to carry out uh, uh, during the project. Uh, he and the, the area of uh, Bulgaria and uh, Thessaloniki, Plovdiv and Thessaloniki, have uh, similar things in common uh, in terms of uh, our uh, perspective of uh, recovery of uh, water and uh, its use uh, and reuse in agriculture. So I'm going to be uh, a bit more, uh, you know, um, consistent on that. And uh, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm Elena Zanu, first of all, uh, I'm an assistant professor at the School of Engineering in the Department of Surveying and, Informa and Geoinformatics in uh, the International Hellenic University. And for this project, I am a scientific collaborator of uh, ANET. ANET is the development organi organization of Thessaloniki and is a, a partner uh, on the Suwano Euro project. I'm going to talk a bit about the SWOT and pest analysis uh, conducting in the area of, uh, for the area of Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki is the second largest city of Greece. The first one is Athens, something you're all familiar with. Uh, Athens, so Thessaloniki is situated uh, northern than Athens. Uh, it's in the north part of Greece on the Thermaic Gulf and uh, at the northwest part of the Aegean Sea. Well, Thessaloniki is, uh, has a large urban area and uh, a 
the is the second uh, greatest city with a population of 800,000 uh, inhabitants uh, approximately but it holds a, a great uh, area a uh, great ag agricultural plain uh, it is the second uh, largest agricultural plain of this of the country and has an habitant surface water bodies of three rivers two major lakes and the sea of course and a considerable number of areas under protection. A few words about the SWOT analysis of Thessaloniki, as already mentioned by Stefan, uh, we, SWOT is uh, an analysis methodology for uh, carrying out uh, uh, important steps and it's a helping tool to determine values, helpful or harm harmful processes and situations. Uh, in order to define barriers and find ways to overcome them. So SWOT analysis uh, is uh, the first step for our formation of our action plan. Uh, the opportunities and threats were ranked based uh, on probability and impact. And the task team aligns strengths and weaknesses with opportunities and threats to develop the regional strategies. Regional strategies are going to be forwarded to you by my colleague uh, Yorgos Yangas on the second part of the presentation. Along with the SWOT analysis, we conducted a PEST analysis, which is a complementary analysis to SWOT but gives us the opportunities and threads uh, of the SWOT analysis. And uh, we also described the PEST analysis in our uh, deliverables uh, of the project. The PEST analysis uh, deals with political, economic, social and technological aspects and uh, were assessed, all these aspects were assessed in order to understand how they impact uh, on the implementation uh, and the business opportunities of water reuse in agriculture. Our methodology for the SWOT uh, analysis, uh, we conducted the questionnaires, we formed the questionnaires, the team uh, that formed the questionnaires was uh, from Arnett and from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. And we included the uh, grouped SWOT categories. Uh, we sent the questionnaires to approximately 30 experts uh, in the reclaimed water sector. This was uh, conducted in June uh, 2019. Uh, and experts were asked to evaluate the relevance of the different aspects, clarifying them from 1 to 10, 1 being not very relevant and 10 being the most relevant. Our experts were academics, researchers, farmers, representatives of local authorities and representatives of the private sector as well. Here you can see uh, how the tables were uh, finalized work, uh, with the categorization of the opportunities, one example about the opportunities, uh, with a relevance of 1 to 10 here, uh, with operational, with uh, all the specific aspects uh, mentioned, and uh, scoring uh, the relevance uh, of these aspects in order to use them to the next uh, step uh, of our uh, research for the SWOT analysis. And here is what uh, it is more uh, understandable to us and to the public is uh, how the strengths, weaknesses, threads and opportunities were formed in these diagrams uh, with the uh, categorization from zero to five of uh, relevance uh, of strength, let's say, for the first uh, diagram. So we can see that here strengths, uh, the, the most uh, strong uh, thing, let's say, uh, for, the, for our research was the knowledge and technology, along with enhancement of water avail availability. The weakest thing is the water demand and legislation uh, on the opportunities we have to uh, mention legislation being uh, the one with the highest score and on threads uh, the treatment uh, intensity uh, was the one that uh, posed the most threat to the formation of the regional action plan. Here we can see a table uh, with uh, combining uh, uh, the SWOT and the PEST analysis. The SWOT analysis is uh, on the 
axis, on the horizontal axis, and the phase analysis in the, on the vertical axis, uh, we can say, say that all these uh, results uh, were taken into account to the regional action plans, uh, were seriously taken into account and uh, helped us to form uh, a plan that could be uh, followed by by the public, by farmers, by stakeholders, by key players uh, in the reclaimed water sector. Thank you for uh, having me. Now, George, the stage is yours for continuing with the presentation on part B. I'm stopping my presentation now. You can continue. Thank you, Elena. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we are seeing it, George. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue the presentation for what happened in uh, Thessaloniki during uh, the action, the deeds of the Action 2.6, uh, the elaboration of the uh, regional action plans. My name is George Ziankas. I'm a scientific collaborator of uh, ANETH, uh, which is already have been presented by my colleague uh, Elena. And uh, I'm going to make a swift presentation. Uh, I must, uh, firstly, I must point out that uh, all eight regional plans adopted a common frame, a common hypothesis, uh, com the same critical aspects, the same elaboration fra framework for delivering their plans. Then I'm going to present uh, the order and the content of the principles, which were taken under consideration for the regional plan of Thessaloniki. And then I will close my presentation with a short look at the basic steps of this plan. So all eight regional uh, actional plans had to have the same main goal. Uh, that was formulated during the Action 2.3 general action plan that was made by the University of Cyprus. And here you can see that the main goal uh, or of the project was to uh, promote the use, the reuse of reclaimed water in order to have a more resilient agricultural sector uh, that it would be able to cope with uh, water scarcity and uh, uh, combat the climate change effects. Here you can see the core aspects uh, that were common in all eight regional action plans, so that uh, they were common in our regional plan also, that was made for Thessaloniki. These aspects have to do with the social perception of the use of the reclaimed water for irrigation of crops, the cost involved for this method and how it must be allocated, uh, the regulatory, uh, the regulatory, regulatory framework, sorry about that, that must be raised to a common level, especially with the boundaries of the, of the European Union. So uh, here you can see the basic principles that we took under consideration uh, for uh, elaborating the regional action plan for Thessaloniki. Uh, building up a common frame of strategy development is a quest for modern European policy. And that's the reason why the Small Europe Consortium decided to develop all these eight regional action plans in a common and coherent manner. At the same time, the developers of these plans were provided with adequate degree of freedom in order to customize the plan and to specific characteristics of each regional. We had a common frame, but also we have uh, degrees of liberty uh, to uh, customize our plans uh, in each regional. And uh, now let's take a quick, sharp look at the principles that... Uh, <coughs> uh, 
here, no, no, here you can see the core of the Salonika Regional Action Plan. Uh, the path arrows represent the steps that are more advanced. For example, uh, the methodology frame, the action one has already been done. Uh, the flat arrows represent the steps that are uh, pending for promotion. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see, I suppose you can see it. Uh, it's the effects of the COVID-19 uh, epidemic. Uh, the hard fact is that uh, the promotion of a new managerial method for effluent of the uh, for the reuse of the effluent of uh, wastewater plants requires intensive face-to-face -face consultation with all local key players. That was very hard to do under the conditions of the last year. Uh, Teleconferencing is a modest alternative, but it cannot bring up to the same level of knowledge and opinion exchange uh, as a real workshop can do. Uh, our uh, actions that we have so far advanced is uh, the European network. We have, have been able to utilize uh, the outcomes of the project in order to promote knowledge and technologies uh, we have made we have uh, already utilizing the information packages uh, we are uh, trying to promote them to all key local uh, key action uh, key players of uh, the region and uh, of course, due to the characteristics of our organization, UNEF is a local development agency. Uh, we are uh, promoting the actions uh, and we are trying to find ways on how to uh, stimulate and to, to use alternative financial resources, uh, non-traditional funding resources, in order to persuade uh, our stakeholders which are uh, the municipalities of uh, the uh, Thessaloniki area in order to upgrade uh, their uh, wastewater treatment plants and uh, finally come to a point that we will be able to reuse the water for uh, irrigation of crops. Uh, here you can see uh, the contact points for further uh, information and uh, if any uh, questions to be answered. And I also have to uh, call you uh, to follow us on social media if you want to uh, watch the progress of uh, this project. Thank you.